Hello and welcome to another episode of 805 Inspires. My name is Eric Davis, Executive Director of TV Santa Barbara. And during this series, we're giving you a behind the scenes look at the many institutions, gardens, and specifically museums of Santa Barbara County. Today, we're joined by Stacy, the Executive Director of the Wildling Museum of Art. And in today's show, we're gonna look at the mission, talk about programs, uh, learn about upcycle artists, and some of the activities that you can do at home. Joining us today is Stacy, the Executive Director of the Wildling Museum of Art and Nature. Thank you for joining us, Stacy. Thank you for having me. We're really excited about this program. Yeah, likewise, we are too. So we're taking a look at uh, museums uh, through the eyes of um, the Executive Director during a pandemic. And um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Wilding Museum of Art and Nature for those who may not know much about it. Sure. So we, uh, we were founded in 1997, originally in Los Olivos, and Patty Jackamain, um, who lives in Santa Barbara and is a wonderful artist herself, is our founder. And she gathered up some of her friends and uh, proposed this idea that a museum about nature and using art of nature could be really inspirational for people. Um, like many of us, she was very concerned about um, disappearing wild places uh, locally as well as much further afield and uh, really felt that our mission might make a difference. And so that's how we were founded. We actually opened our doors in 2000. So this is actually our 20th anniversary year. Well, congratulations on 20 years. Yeah, we're excited. Unfortunately, it happens to be a pandemic year, but otherwise we're excited. <laughs> Now you have a, is it a, is a studio, a physical facility in Solvang? We have actually a two-story building, um, yeah, right here in Solvang. We're on Highway 246, otherwise known as Mission Drive, where we are. And uh, we have three floors of exhibitions. Uh, so there's actually a lot to see and do when visitors do come. We typically have our largest exhibition on the first floor. That changes two to three times a year. And then uh, we, on our second floor, which we now call the Valley Oak Gallery, we have an amazing permanent mural of the Valley Oak habitat that was created by John Iwerks, who's a wonderful area artist and, and part of the Oak Group. And uh, so that's always there for people to enjoy. It's a whole habitat that's very exciting. And uh, then we change shows in the rest of the gallery. And then we also have a classroom up here on the third floor where our offices also are. And then we have a uh, board meetings, art workshops, um, different kinds of activities on the on the third floor as well. So a lot going on here. How are, how are you approaching it uh, through during this uh, this crisis? Yeah, it, it's been challenging, like all of us, of course. Um, like I think everybody um, here, all the other museums, we closed our doors on March 13th. And so we've been um, able to operate behind the scenes. We have a wonderful assistant director, Lauren Sharp, who is uh, very smart and capable and um, did as much as she could to as quickly as we could shift to doing things online and virtual. So we made sure that all of our shows that are uh, currently on display got online as quickly as possible and we started thinking about other kinds of programs and activities. Uh, one of the most fun things I think that she's done because I've personally participated is uh, she found a program that created puzzles out of some of our permanent collection artwork. So you can have a fine time online and actually experience our, our artwork in a, a puzzle format and not have any cats or distractions or lose pieces, which is kind of fun. Are, do you have any kind of virtual visits or you had mentioned uh, lectures, documentaries, is there a way that people can engage during this, this little bit of uh, downtime? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I uh, Certainly our Ray Strong uh, video is available on our website. We uh, have a virtual visit page actually, a dedicated page on our website that Lauren created. And if you scroll down that a bit, you're going to see quite a variety of things. So there's uh, downloadable coloring sheets that families can download, um, word searches, and uh, um, also gallery visits with our different exhibitions. Um, we are right now uh, putting together our newest exhibition that we'll be able to launch when we open, hopefully in July. And uh, for that one, we're gonna be uh, showing online an actual video tour. So Lauren will be videoing me in the gallery talking about specific um, pieces in the show. 
we've also started doing um, webinars. So I actually got to do my first one a couple of weeks ago. It was a little nerve wracking initially, but I think it came out okay. And that was all about our Starry Nights exhibition and that's available online. And then we have, uh, we're starting a whole series with outside artists that we're starting to uh, make available too. And you've mentioned this a couple of times, but you're looking to uh, get back into the swing of things in July and a kind of a limited reopening. That's what we're hoping for. Of course, first of all, you know, the state and county have to okay it, um, which looks like that should be happening in June. But there's a lot of new procedures that we all have to document and put in place and supplies we have to get that I think we all know certain supplies are taking a little bit of time to actually arrive on site. So we think we'll have everything kind of pulled together probably by um, early July. And of course, we'll make a big announcement when we're available to be open and uh, put it out to media and it'll be uh, definitely shown on our social media and our website too. Can you talk a little bit more about, you touched on it at the beginning, but um, you know, really focus on the mission. Yeah, we really um, do feel that the, the artworks that these wonderful, talented people are creating are an incredible window into nature, uh, whether it's wildlife or landscapes of local areas or endangered areas further afield. And I think it also help, can help create kind of a, a wonderful wanderlust so that hopefully people, when they experience our exhibitions or programs, get really inspired to then also go and experience those places. And uh, one place we've kind of focused on a bit is the Carrizo Plain National Monument, as an example. Uh, it's, you know, in a little bit in Santa Barbara County, more in uh, San Luis Obispo County, but it's a nearby national monument that not a lot of people have actually gone to and experienced themselves. And uh, so we've done different exhibitions over the years and actually even created a documentary, thanks to Santa Barbara filmmaker Jeff McLaughlin, because we really wanted to elevate what Carrizo Plain is so that people understand it, want to visit it, and perhaps most importantly for the long run, really want to help protect it. One of the things I'm really excited to talk about are your programs. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the programs that uh, you have? Yeah, we actually have a pretty diverse array. Um, of course, we have our exhibitions. That's kind of our primary way of getting our mission out there. But we do uh, usually a couple times a month, there's some kind of an art workshop going on. We work with quite a variety of different kinds of artists for classes. So it could be mosaic or printmaking, um, painting, kind of you name it. Uh, we like to do film screenings with local documentaries when we can. Of course, there's lectures, and uh, one of my favorite things is artist talks when we can get a couple of artists or, or maybe up to four together to kind of share about their insights and how they do their work. And it always seems to really engage our audiences when uh, those happen. And probably the most um, exciting thing, although there's a long lead time with it, is we've started to make some documentaries. Um, mm -hmm. I think I alluded to the one on, on Carrizo Plain National Monument, which we created as an adjunct to a show we had about our California National uh, Parks and Monuments. Um, but we really wanted to create a documentary because it'd be long-term. It's something that we can always have available on our website, in our store. It's a story that needs to be told, you know, for the long-term. And then we did one um, last year too, in conjunction with the show that we had about Ray Strong. Uh, again, working with Jeff McLaughlin, we created a really great documentary about Ray's work and how influential he has been on so many area artists as well through the Oak Group and other artists. And we're really proud of those and looking forward to, you know, more down the road. Yeah, I'm very fortunate to have a Ray Strong and just love uh, his work and, and that kind of the essence of that. And it seems like that's what uh, art and nature is about. Exactly. Yeah, he, he really, I sort of feel like Ray Strong is the perfect artist to exemplify what our mission is all about. Something that caught my eye um, in doing a little research was this uh, upcycle. Um, what is that? Yeah, so everybody is real familiar with the term recycling, and hopefully we all do it at home and uh, minimize our waste that goes to the landfill. But uh, upcycling requires a little bit more creativity, and um, it's, a, it's a fairly common thing now, and we like to encourage it whenever we can. So we thought that would be a fun activity for this um, feature. And, but it's something that we've done with our kids that come here a lot. 
Um, you can take something as commonplace as an egg carton, um, toilet paper tubes, paper towel tubes. Um, it, you'd be amazed at what you can um, find and sort of repurpose and start decorating and transforming into um, something that, you know, is an artwork that might last for a little while. And part of this uh, 805 Inspires series is uh, an activity. Is this going to be part of your activity? Yes, it is. So at this time, we wanted to focus on egg cartons. We um, actually reached out to uh, one of our staff. We asked him to help us create a video that shows how to turn an egg carton into a little fox. Thanks, Stacy. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here at the Wildling, we marry art and nature all the time in all kinds of different things that we do. And uh, we're also a green certified business through the county and state, and I really believe in uh, being sustainable for the long haul. As we all know, climate change is a real thing, and if we aren't more careful about our resources, it's only gonna get worse from here out. So it really behooves all of us to think about things like waste and trash and how and where we get our energy. Uh, one of the ways we try and exemplify this is, is in kind of the crafts that we encourage families and kids to do. And over the years, we've done a lot with, um, frankly, trash and trying to upcycle it into fun things, which also makes it really affordable for families to do. So we've done a series of simple crafts and maybe one not so simple, but with the homely egg carton. Um, yes, they're recyclable. However, how much more fun is it even to chop it up and turn it into other things? Um, sometimes we would call that upcycling. So we can do simple things like taking one of the eggs uh, little um, cups and turning it into a turtle. Uh, you can uh, open them up with your scissors and turning them into flowers. Uh, we also found a cute activity where you cut a couple of them apart and you end up with a really fun um, bird face that you could turn in maybe to a mask. And then um, if you're really crafty and very skilled and have some good glue, uh, you can do what uh, another intern did for us a few years ago and create a really beautiful wreath. This is, believe it or not, a cardboard ring and the rest is all painted um, egg carton. So I hope you enjoy our next video, which was created by our store assistant, Jake Abraham. And uh, he'll show you exactly how to turn an egg carton into a fox. As we kind of wrap up, is there anything you'd like uh, for viewers to know or uh, sh stories to share uh, about the museum? Oh, I, 
I feel like I kind of gave a, an overview. We're just really excited to welcome people back soon. And um, if you're not already uh, a fan of us, uh, a follower of us on Instagram or Facebook, um, we really do put a lot of information out that way. And that'll give you a good sense of what we have to offer. And then hopefully you'll be able to see us in, in person pretty soon. And where's the best pe place for people to learn more about your programs uh, as they see the show? Yeah, please find us online. So our website is pretty simple, wildlingmuseum.org. And there's two L's in um, our name, wildlingmuseum.org. And then we have a really active uh, social media presence. So Instagram and Facebook uh, and Twitter also um, are really good ways to keep an eye on, on what's going on here. And one of the things I've been asking is how can the public support you? Is it, uh, is it memberships? Is it, is it donations? Is it just getting involved with your, your web, engaging with your website and keeping an eye out for your newsletters? Yeah, there's lots of different ways to engage. Of course, um, financial support is always needed. We are a pretty small museum and I really do rely on individual support and membership is a fantastic way to be able to do that. Um, and all that can be uh, found out online through our website, but also um, volunteering. Although right now things are not super active for our volunteers, but uh, before long they'll be revving up again and we have uh, lots of need for volunteers, whether it's helping at our front desk or uh, helping us administratively, special events, whenever we're able to roll those back out again, that kind of um, stuff. That's a really wonderful way to, to stay engaged as well. Great. Thank you, Stacy. Appreciate having you. Yeah, thank you so much, Eric. Well, thank you for joining us, and thank you, Stacy. That was a fascinating look inside the Wilding Museum of Art and Nature. This is Eric Davis signing off on another episode of 805 Inspires.